Um, the easiest place to find uh, Snapcore first to download it are pretty much all of um, Toby Dynavox's software. Is you go to a website called mytobydynavox.com. Uh, from there, uh, you'll see on the top menu, you'll see support. Click on that and then click on downloads. So downloads brings you to all the software that's available from Snapcore first. Um, so just scroll down um, until you see Snapcore first. Click on that and that gives you your options to, to download. If you're downloading it on an iPad, um, you can skip this section and go straight to the iTunes store and um, just search for Snapcore first. Um, and then on a Windows, you can just download it. Um, you can download the free version where it won't speak. If you have a license code, you can put the license code in and then you've got your full version. Or if you're a speech and language therapist or an occupational therapist or whatever, uh, and you've got a professional license from either ourselves or Toby Dynavox, you just put in that license code and it will activate, activate your software. So once you activate it, once you've got your software downloaded, um, you'll get to this page. So it's the Snapcore first getting started page. Um, so this is when you open a software for the first time, this is what you're met with. If you already have a copy of Snapcore first um, and you want to restore it, you can click restore existing user. Um, you can enter your My Toby Dynavox details. So you enter your email and password, or if you have it on a USB key or you've stored it to the computer, you can restore the software, the, the user accounts from, from a local file as well. But today we're going to do it from scratch. Um, so I'll click get started. Um, here, the first thing it will ask me is what page set do I want? The page set is the makeup of the software and um, the, the kind of language we want to use or the vocabulary layout that we want. So um, the most familiar one that people who have used that core first before would probably be the core first United Kingdom. Um, other ones that you may be interested in is there's a core first scanning page now for switch scanners. It's, it's set up in a, in a very um, in a layout that's particular for scanners. There's the aphasia page set. If, if you don't know what this is, there's some information on our website and we'll, we'll probably have some sessions around this. Uh, people with brain injury, um, uh, the aphasia page set, it's laid out completely different to the, to the core first page set. And then there's the text-based page set again for people who may be literate, want to store messages, maybe using message banking or anything like that. So the most popular ones we use are the core first, United Kingdom, the aphasia and the text-based page set. So we're going to select core first United Kingdom today. Um, sorry, there's one step back here. You can also change the language down here. So if you're not an English speaker, there are a few uh, different options uh, of languages, and these are updated, you know, as they're as they're localizing the Snap Core First in in different languages. So uh, we're going with English Core First United Kingdom. I press this arrow down the bottom right hand of my screen, then log into my Toby Dynavox. If you don't have a my Toby Dynavox uh, account, I would suggest you set one up. Um, it's free to do so. You can do it on the mytobydynavox.com account. You can do it from here. If you don't want one, you can do it directly from Snap. What it does is it gives you the ability to back up um, your software to the cloud, basically. Um, so, you know, you can share it, you can sync it with other devices. So you may have a dedicated device like an i110 and you want to sync it over to an ipad or anything like that um or you could be working with a therapist and you want to share your uh share your uh, uh page sets or your vocabulary or anything like that and um, so it just makes it a little bit easier for backup and things like that you don't have to worry about usb keys or or, or anything like that so um so and then so the next stage it brings you to is that you enter your username. You can skip that process if you don't want to set up a MyToby Dynavox. The, the arrow will just skip it below. We're going to enter the name. So because I have a MyToby, it's going to automatically pick that. But today I'm going to change it to ham sandwich. Um, obviously, you put in your, your username. The next thing, it's going to um, select your voice. Because we've selected the UK version, um, it's going to pop up the UK voices first. So these are you know, localized accents for UK. Scroll down, you'll see some Scottish, Australian, Indian, American. Um, there are different versions on the iPad. There's um, one or two Irish voices. I think uh, Moira, adult female, is on the iPad version. Um, you can you know, filter what you're looking for. So if I'm a male and I'm an adult, it'll just filter down to those voices so you can you can speak, pick what's ever specific to you. Um, so we select our voice, we'll go to next. 
and now we're selecting our grid size the grid size will be the amount of buttons we have on the page um, everything i've done so far nothing is final like so we can do it in the setup but we can change it if, if we feel we've made a mistake or it doesn't seem right or we want to change it later on we can do so so snap core first can be laid out from one button on the page so you know we might have a user that may only need one or two buttons um right up to 80 words on a page so eight by ten and everything in between so for today i'm going to pick five by five so i'm going to put 25 25 words on the page then i press tick and that's it we've created our we've created our user so we've got we've downloaded our software we've set it up we've picked our voice we've picked our grid size and then our software is now we've we've linked it with our my toby account so now we're kind of ready to go um so look i'm not going to go through the layout of snapcore first we have other videos on that we'll send them on you know how to you know navigate and find your way around but today we're going to show you how to edit so the next stage is edit so on our left hand side which is our navigation we have our core words our quick fires our topics and our keyboard i'm going to go into topics today to edit buttons so i'm going to select your topic one because there's a couple of if i go back to topics sorry you have one two three four five six these are all blank so you'll find lots of blank buttons in here so i'm gonna i'm gonna create my own topic shall we say so i'm gonna create a topic around food so i want to start editing some of the buttons in this page so to edit any part of snapcore first you press in the top right hand corner you'll see a cog with a pencil through it that brings me into edit mode so when i say go to edit i press this button and now I just click on the button I want to click on. You don't have to do anything else when we're in this mode. If I want to edit a button, then just press the button. So if I'm a touch user, just, just touch it. I'm using my mouse today, obviously. So I click it. Once I see the blue tick on the button, that means that that's the button I am editing. Okay. So I want to create some buttons around food. So underneath here, I have my edit mode. Sometimes you might be able to see this. It might be, you might only see it like this. So there's three lines here. Just pull them up. So you can bring up the edit mode just sometimes maybe the configuration on your ipad or on your your system mightn't pop up the whole menu so just drag it up so you can see everything so uh, make sure that's on button we're selecting this one so i want to change the label so i'm going to create a button for apple so i type in apple it'll automatically give me a pcs symbol for apple so and if i want that's all i have to do and i'm done and i can click apple and it says apple so all i have to do is put in the apple so um, i'll click on the next button so i press sorry, i may press my edit button up here again this time i want to create a button for banana i just click on it in label i'm going to put in banana again it pops up a pcs symbol for the banana but this time you know i might not like that particular symbol for banana so all i have to do is on my left hand side here where i see this image of the banana i click on it and it gives me lots of different options. So um, Snapcore first has access to all the PCS symbols that are in BoardMaker. So it uploads them. You get updates every 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 time there's an update in Snap, it'll bring through a number of the uh, a number of the symbols. So in this instance, you know, I want just a little bit more information. I want an arrow to point that we are talking about banana. So I'm going to select this one for banana. Um, again, so. If I wanted to move on to the next button, I don't always have to press done. If I'm editing a few buttons at a time, I can just click on the next button and I can start editing that button. So pair, and again, if I you know, don't like that image for pair, I'm gonna go with this one. It's because I'm more familiar with this one um, and so on. And I'll go orange. Again, it shows me the fruit. I might just want the color whatever it may be so i get the option to choose from all the different pcs symbols that are that are on the system so um so that's simple how we um add a label to the button we can choose between our different pcs symbols and once i'm finished i press done in the top corner apple banana pear orange and simple they'll start working straight away i don't have to put any functions on them to tell it to speak or anything like that it'll automatically do it um in some instances though we might want a button to do more than just say the word that's on the button the label on the button so say if i'm hungry for example um i might type in hungry and i have my symbol and okay this one's fine for me i'll press done hungry but i might want it to say a little bit more than just hungry so underneath um label you'll see message so label is the text that is on the button 
and a message is what the button will say. It'll automatically say the label unless you type something into the message. So in this case, I'm gonna type in, I am hungry. So now when I press done, I click on it. I am hungry. It gives you a full phrase from, from a button. So um, I'll do that again. So here I'm gonna put in drink in my label. Um, I'm gonna type in, I would like a drink, please. Ooh. Press done. And again, I would like a drink, please. So again, you can change between just having it say the one word or we could have it say a phrase as well. So the label is what will uh, display on the button and it will automatically say that unless you change the message. Other things you can do to edit a button is um, you can change the style of a button. So when I click on it here, just over on the left hand side, you can see style. So I can change the button background color if I wanted to. So, you know, I might make it blue. Um, I could, you know, change the button border. I could change the label color so it's in black. So I might want something in a bit more contrast um, just to make it a little bit more easier to see. Uh, I can change the font size and I can change the layout of a button. So um, the layout is down the bottom here. So if I click on that, um, the page set has the label under the image. So I can turn that off. I might have it label only. So I might take out, I might have somebody that's moving from symbol to text and I might want, they might be familiar with the planning of the system. They might know where the buttons are, but we might start to remove some of the symbols so that they're getting, you know, they're working on their literacy. I might just have an image only. I might have no, um, I might have no um, uh, label on at all. I could have the label on the top. I could have the label on the right. I can have the label on the left. Um, so you can, you can configure it any which way you want. Um, so there we can, you know, change the overall overall style of a button. Um, so I'm using blank buttons here, but you can edit any button in the system. So every button is the same. So we were creating a topic around food. So I'm going to press edit, which is up here. Your topic one. I'm going to change that to food. And now, um, now I know that folder is around food. Uh, I could go back to core words. I might decide that this isn't the symbol for want that we're using, you know, that I'm familiar with or that we've used in school in the past. Um, so again, I'll press my edit button, I'll click on want, I'll click on the PCS, and then I will see, you know, I might go, you know, something, uh, I use this one. So, and then, you know, I've changed, I've changed my symbol. So every button on the system is editable. One of the other things, I know we're using symbols here, but you may also want to mix that with photographs as well or pictures so you've you've two ways of doing that so again i'll press edit i'll click on a button i'll put in say pen i'll go through the symbols here and i will say you know i don't you know none of these are familiar they don't look like the pen that i like to use um so you know i want to take a picture of it so i can click on the camera button here then I click from camera, but because I'm using my camera here for this webinar, I'm not able to take a picture. All you got to do is, you know, hold your picture or your whatever you want in front of the camera, take a picture and that will do it. Or if you have stored images, you know, if you have, you know, your photo albums or, you know, pictures of friends and family, you might want to upload them. So here I click from photo, uh, from photo library. Here is a very rushed picture of a pen I took before the webinar when I realized that I wasn't able to use my camera. Um, and then I press done. And as you can see, the photograph comes up uh, on, on the image. So you can mix and match your PCS symbols with um, with your, uh, with your photographs or pictures or whatever it may be. And you can take pictures from within the software itself. So um, that's how we edit buttons. That's how we change the label, how we change the message, uh, how we add pictures and photographs directly from the software. Um, we spoke at the start about the grid size, how I chose my grid size. Um, it was a five by five when I set up the software. But sometimes you may have a person who's progressing and they may want more buttons on their page. Or, you know, you might have started off on a smaller grid size and you might want to grow uh, as we're learning more language and vocabulary. So we can do that very easily. So when I press edit and down at the bottom here, I've got button, page, page set, user and system. In this instance, I'm selecting page set. Then on the left hand side, I'm selecting grid size. So as you can see, we're on five by five. I can go to six by six. 
and I'm making the grid size bigger. So I can just keep changing the grid size up or I can come down as well. So, um, so you know, I'm down to three by three here. Here is one of the buttons I edited. So uh, the want, I change the symbol. All your edits will go with you. So you don't lose anything when you're going up or down a grid size. So that's a really nice thing in the software is that as a person grows, their language grows, their vocabulary grows, you don't have to re-edit if you change the grid size. All you have to do is, I'll go through it again, edit, page set down here, grid size on the left, and then just select the grid size you want. Um, so yeah, very easy to move up or move down, you know, obviously uh, depending on your situation, you may you may choose to do so. So that's um, one way of, um, you know, as a person grows with the system. Another way is that you may be happy with the grid size. You may be saying, okay, look, the person I'm working with or myself, I can, I can handle 25 words on a page, but, you know, in terms of my access, I can, you know, if I'm using touch, I can touch the buttons easily. I'm not making any mistakes there. If I'm an eye gaze user, switch scanner, this is the kind of size that suits me. But my vocabulary mightn't be there yet. There might be too many words on the page. Just, you know, I mightn't have learned all these words, so I'm not quite there yet. So you can hide buttons on the page. So if I press edit and I select a button, so I'm going to just select you. Over on the right hand side here, you'll see a couple of options. Let's just press the eyeball and that hides the button. And it's not deleted, it's not gone, it's just hidden. Just in this instance, I just want to kind of remove some of the vocabulary on the page as the person is maybe learning their way around the system or learning their vocabulary. When I press edit again, I click on you. The eyeball doesn't have a line through it now. I press it again and you is back. So again, very easy to hide and unhide buttons. Um, we have 25 words on a page here, so we might want to do a few buttons at a time. So I press edit, and now I'm using this button, which has got four squares and two ticks. It's the multi-select button. If ever you want to know what these buttons on the right-hand side do, you'll see there's an, two arrows down the left, just down the bottom right-hand corner, sorry. Press them, and it kind of pops out what they actually do. So I'm looking for the multi-select button here. And um, so I'm gonna select a few buttons. So you'll see I've got ticks on a few of them. I'm gonna take all these out because I just wanna work on maybe requesting and a couple of core words. So I've selected a good few on this page. Now I can just go over to the eyeball, press the eyeball, press done. And now my page looks um, not as say cluttered for somebody that may not understand all the vocabulary on it. So uh, I, won't. I can go into my word list. And again, there's lots of categories in here. Some of them mightn't be relevant. So again, I'm going to help out by pressing the multi-select. I'm just going to randomly start pressing buttons here. Obviously, you'll put a bit more thought into it um, on what we hide and what we don't hide. Press the eyeball. And again, we've reduced the amount of buttons on a page. We've reduced the amount of categories. We may have reduced the amount of choice, just as the person might be learning their way around the system and getting used to it. Um, we can also... Um, the system is arranged, shall we say, in the, in the word lists. Um, these are arranged in high frequency. They mightn't be high frequency to you. It's just a general, this is the high frequency. And in topics, they're arranged in alphabetical. So maybe for somebody that doesn't want to scroll down lots of pages, you might want to rearrange some of the categories. So again, I press edit. I click. I like to talk about puzzles. So I just hold my finger down on it. So a bit like moving an app on your iPad or on your phone and I swap it with the item that is there. So again, very easy to move and rearrange things. I'll do that again. So I'll press edit. I'm gonna scroll down and move. Hold my finger on it till it kind of grays out. I then start to move it. And then wait until the other one kind of jumps and then you've moved it up. So um, very kind of easy to move things around, to hide buttons, to change the grid size, to personalize. Um, Snapcore first to to your system to your way of communicating. So, so those were the three things we wanted to cover today: was how to set up your software, how to start doing some simple editing, um, and then how to change your grid size and to hide buttons. So, um, very kind of simple, simple stuff. That was our twenty-minute ham sandwich session today. Mm -hmm.